Now, in breaking news overnight, the former U.S. president, Donald Trump, has been hit with a fourth charge, this time by the state of Georgia, who are accusing him of attempting to overturn his 2020 election loss to Joe Biden. Yeah, a district attorney from Georgia has issued a deadline of the 25th of August for the former president and 18 others to turn themselves in. Meanwhile, of course, Donald Trump denies any wrongdoing. Well, let's get more analysis from the political commentator, Scotty Nell Hughes, who joins us from Nashville, Tennessee. Very good morning to you, uh, Scotty. Look, it's easy for people to get confused about where we are. There are so many charges now, but this one seems to particularly relate to a phone call that has subsequently been into the public domain and used as public evidence in which the former president called the most senior electoral official in Georgia and said, you need to find me more votes because that margin against President Biden was so tight in the state of Georgia. Well, good morning, and it's a, another week and another indictment by a politically motivated Democrat district of attorney against Donald Trump to once again do exactly what she's charging the President Trump of doing, which is election interference. Listen, you cannot look at this latest round of indictments, which, by the way, is no secret. We knew this was going on. Her investigation has taken two and a half years, in fact, the grand jury foreman went on this very bizarre media tour a couple of weeks ago that people were questioning, how do you have a grand jury foreman doing media interviews, laughing about the fact that this indictment was going to come down against President Trump and the 18 others and still take this case seriously? I mean, even today, this is just reeking of absolute corruption. Even today, earlier on the government website, on Fulton County's government website, they posted this indictment, as well as the jurors' names in it, almost to the T. Within an hour when it was called out by the media, it was taken down. It's like they realized, oh, wait a minute, we posted this too soon. They had not even voted by the grand jury yet at that stage of the game. So once again, this is just reeking of political motivation by the enemies of Joe Biden, his DOJ, and the Democrats just to keep Donald Trump from being able to run in 2024. OK, well, look, they may be fair points, but let's... It, it is basically, as Isabel said, a lot of it around this phone call, which is evidence. Let's have a listen. We have won this election in Georgia. The people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. You should want to have an accurate election, and you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I know you don't. No, no, you don't. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a criminal offense. I just want to find 11,780 because we won the state. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. If that's not election interference, Scotty, what is? Well... Donald Trump still has freedom of speech. Nothing that he said in that was technically illegal. We were still missing military votes, which are traditionally conservative from across the seas. And you're talking about Georgia, a state that is traditionally very, very red. So for it to be overwhelmingly, like it was saying, going blue, of course, Donald Trump's going, have we voted? Have we double counted? He wasn't saying you must change the vote. You must yeah, you have to find out where are these votes. There's nothing absolutely illegal with what Donald Trump said. But if this was all it was hinging on, if it was just hinging on this phone call, then why bring in the other 18? Why bring in Mike Pence? Why bring in all of these other things? And by the way, why do it with a DA who just yesterday launched her re-election website saying to, to capitalize on all this fame she knew was going to come down today? The timing of this, you cannot ignore. So if you're basing all this off of just one phone call, then why bring in everybody else? And why make sure that you're hoping that the judge puts this six months away from now, which puts us right in the middle of primary season? Well, um, Scotty, obviously we know that President, former President Trump has very much denied any sort of election interference, calling this a politically motivated witch hunt. Um, this is serious for him, even though this will probably lead to a bounce in the polls. But if, he, for example, he were to be re-elected, this is at state level, so he couldn't pardon himself from within the White House. So how serious a problem is this for Trump? Well, I will say this, of all of the indictments that have come against him, this is probably the one that his lawyers are actually going to have to do some serious legwork on just because of various parts in this and the fact that it is a Georgia case. But, I say but, 
you cannot look. The reason why this is continuing to build his strength within his base is because every indictment just happens to come from Democrat-led DA cities. Even the one that they filed in Florida, it came from a grand jury from Washington, D.C. They couldn't even go to West Palm Beach where they actually filed the indictment and get a grand jury there. They had to go to a Democrat city like D.C. to find uh, a jury that would go along with their ways. So this is why it's going to continue to build Donald Trump's base and, and continue, I think, to even pull independence over because they're seeing this as a continued targeting of Donald Trump and until they actually can say, prove that, it, like I said, if it, would just, if it was just Donald Trump, why bring the other 18 in? It's showing this is a political motivated from people who have long time stated that they've been against Donald Trump and him running again in 2024. Uh, would you agree, sorry, just on that point, would you agree that the timing of this is, is critical? Because if, for example, he was convicted, it's likely that although it might boost his popularity with his base, there would be a group of conservative Republicans who'd be very worried, despite him being so far ahead of all the other candidates in the race within the Republicans, very worried about putting a convicted criminal into the White House. Well, if it was a true conviction, but right now everything's showing that this is a Democrat-led witch hunt. I mean, you have to look at the timing. Like you said, two and a half years it's taken her to get us to this point. And magically, just after a week of the other indictment coming down in, in the other state, now you've got this one. That would lead us six months from now, right in the middle of primary season. That's what that's one of the major cases to show that this is a politically motivated event. So to say that he's convicted of it, the question is, is like, if is he actually going to be given a fair chance, a fair trial? And what the Democrats are once again missing on this case, this is going to allow his attorneys, his team of attorneys to actually look into the election events that happened. Back in 2020, they're going to be able to question the secretary of state. They're going to be able all of these charges of voter fraud that him and his team made that has caused these 18 to be involved. They're now going to be able to question. We might actually get a truth and transparency into what actually happened in 2020 in the state of Georgia. OK, Scotty, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Indeed. Thank you.